بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن شاء الله تعالى we're going to continue to read in our book a blessed valley and we reached up to the section of the house of Al Atas and we read the biography of the great Imam. Sheikh Omar bin Abdurrahman al Atas, who was the Sheikh of the Sheikh Ali Baras and the Sheikh of Imam Abdullah bin Alawi al Haddad and others. So, inshallah, we'll continue with his grandchildren, among them the great Imam Habib Ali ibn Hassan al Atas. Bismillah. On page 120. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulullah. The author, may Allah ta'ala have mercy on him, said, Habib Hussein's great grandson, Ali, son of Hassan, son of Abdullah, son of Al Hussein, son of Al Umar al Atas, Rahimullah, was born in Hurayda in 1121 AH, 1709 CE. His mother, Fatima, was not a Sharifa, but had been chosen to be Habib Hassan's wife by Habib Hussein for her virtuous character, her love and fear of Allah Ta'ala. Habib Hassan died in 1124 AH, 1712 CE. So it was that Ali and his brothers were raised by their mother, their great, their grandfather, excuse me, Abdullah, and their great grandfather, Hussein. Habib Ali, rahimahullah, later recounted how he found memorizing the Qur'an difficult when first sent to the Qur'an school, until one day, as he was at home, <clears throat> he picked up the Qur'an, opened it <clears throat> opened it at random, fell upon Surah Al-Mutafifin, started reading, and for a reason that he did not divulge, from then on the Qur'an was made easy for him to learn. Mm. However, it soon became clear that he enjoyed an exceptional memory. He also recounted how... When a famous poet once visited Hurayda, he listened to him reciting a number of his poems, and then the next day himself recited them to his great-grandfather. The <laughs> latter, who had also noticed that young Ali was a gifted poet, instructed him to leave poetry altogether and concentrate on the Qur'an. There will be time for poetry in due course, he added. Habib Ali, rahimahullah, did as instructed, but in addition to the text of the Qur'an, he also learned all the commentaries he could find, old and new, and mastered the rules of recitation, as well as the courtesies, the courtesies required of the Qur'an student as expounded by Imam Nawawi in his book, Al-Tibyan. In this book of Imam Nawawi, Al-Tibyan, Fi Adab, Hamalat al-Qur'an, is a very important book related to Al-Qur'an by Imam Nawawi. Insha'Allah, in the future, it will be a book that we read together. Mm. Very early in his life, he was recognized by people endowed with unveiling for the great saint he was to become. On one occasion, as he was sitting amongst the youngsters with his brother Abu Bakr, listening to the chanting of the Maulid, um, a majloub, from another a town. is a person who is spiritually in a state of unawareness. Whereas, even though they're on the earth, they are not fully aware of their surroundings, being immersed in spiritual states. Mm. Imagine Thub from another town appeared in the middle of the gathering, his hair smelling of musk, and started to turn in ecstasy. Then he dashed towards the children, lifted up Habib Ali, rahimahullah, from amongst them, and returning to the center of the gathering, started turning again with him in his arms. The following day, a Sayyid who had witnessed the event asked Imaj Thub whether he had previous knowledge of the small boy he had carried in his arms the day before. He answered, no, but I saw him as light shimmering in the darkness of the night amongst these youngsters. When told he was Ali, son of Hassan, son of Abdullah, son of Hussein, son of Omar al atas he said, if you are given to live long enough, you will see what a great man he will become and how imposing his rank will be. He will reach the degree, 
excuse me, he will reach the degree of his ancestor, Umar ibn Abdul Rahman. Young Ali, rahimahullah, devoted most of his time to serving his grandfather, Habib Abdullah. They were very poor, and sometimes when he wished to attend Habib Hussein's teaching sessions, he was forced to borrow decent clothes from other boys. In the course of these sessions, he read Hidayah al Hidayah of Imam al Ghazali, rahimahullah, and Nawawi's Atkar, <coughs> Al Fusul Al Muhima, a book by a Sunni scholar on the merits of the 12 Imams. And one of the things we should pay attention when we see the books that these scholars concentrated on and that were prominent, we ourselves should be attached to those books and those scholars. So, like Bidayatul Hidayah of Imam al Ghazali, remember that was the book by which. Sheikh Ali Baras received his opening. And when Habib Aydarus bin Umar al-Habashi radiallahu ta'ala anhu came to Habib Abdullah bin Hussein bin Tahir and asked him for al wasiya he said al wasiya al bidaya Right? The bidaya of Imam al-Ghazali, bidaya al hidayah so that is something we should, these great awliya, they were attached to these books. We should find ourselves having an attachment, abundant reading in these books. And one of the things I'm trying to get you used to, I don't know if you may have paid attention, reading and reading and reading and reading and reading and reading and reading. And reading. Sometimes just reading, sometimes with explanation. To get in the habit, of being attached to these beneficial books. Because a lot of these books, as Imam al Haddad said, that sometimes the secret of the sheikh or the scholar or the wali is placed in his books. Sometimes it's placed in his descendants. Sometimes it's in his gaze. Sometimes it's in his words, right? Sometimes it's in his gatherings. There are multiple aspects by which one can receive. So one should have one's portion of all those things. Mm. And al adkar of Imam al nawi to the extent that the scholars, they said, sell your house, bi'addar wa al adkar. Sell your house and buy the adkar. So that's an example. If that's what they did and they were successful, let us emulate, inshallah. Naam. As well as listened to what was being read by others, which included many Quran commentaries, the Kushayri treaties on Sufism. Risalat al is one of the four main books that one needs to understand well if one wants to understand the Ba'alawi way. Mm. Together with Sheikh Zakaria's Zakaria Al Ansari's commentary. Zakaria Al Ansari was the great Shafi'i uh, scholar and Ashari scholar and Sufi who was the student of Al Hafiz Ibn Hajr Al Asqalani. And he wrote a commentary, a hashia, on the Risala of Imam Abu Al Qasim Al Kushari in Tasawwuf. Mm. And the Hikam of Ibn Atta'ila with Ibn Abad's commentary. Which is uh, a beautiful explanation of the wisdoms of Ibn Atta'ila. And we, we, we'll, we read that before all of these books uh, with our teachers. Uh, and we read the Hikam with Sheikh Samir without this commentary. But inshallah, in the future, we'll do it with the commentary of Ibn Abad, radiallahu ta'ala mm. He read other works before his grandfather, Habib Abdullah. The time between Maghrib and Aisha, he spent in the mosque, concentrating on his devotions. The night he spent with his grandfather. When the latter rose for his night prayers, he rose with him, after which they recited the Quran until dawn. Till dawn. When he reached 13 years of age, he said to Habib Hussein, I wish to be inculcated with the dhikr and invested with the kirqa. 
Habib Hussein asked him, can you fast for three days? He answered affirmatively, fast <clears throat> fasted the three days without anyone else being aware of it and returned to Habib Hussein on the fourth day to find him about to begin his duha prayers. He mm. instructed him to take a gushul, intending for it to be the ghusl of repentance, and then pray to rakas, also intending them to be the rakas of repentance. Because they, repentance is the first step on the path, as the ulama said. Mm. By the time he had done, Habib Hussein, Rahimullah, was finished with a duha prayer and was sitting cross-legged waiting for him. The youngster sat in front of him facing the Kaaba. He placed his hand on his head, uttered the two testimonies, then taught him to say, La ilaha illallah. Your heart is here in your left side, he said. So when you utter the negation, La ilaha, turn your head to your right side. Then turn the left then turn to the left side where your heart is, he said, placing his rosary on the boy's heart. After Habib... Some of them, when they used to teach us the dhikr, it would be in that swaying motion of the head, la ilaha illallah, to the heart. Mm. After Habib Hussein's death in 1139 AH, 1727 CE, Habib Ali, Rahimullah, who was 17 at the time, left for Turin, intending to study under the great masters he knew were there. No sooner had he begun to settle in Turin than his brother Abu Bakr arrived with a letter from his grandfather, Habib Abdullah. He found him at Imam Haddad's mosque at Al-Hawi and gave him the letter, which read, To my son Ali, son of Hassan, who is the lamp in the dark, we have learnt that you wish to sojourn in Turim. Turim is in no need of you. Its own people suffice her. You are in no need of her either, and your own land needs you. As soon as, <clears throat> as, soon as you take cognizance of the contents of this letter, return to us. His instructions to Abu Bakr were that he allow his brother no room for delay. Thus, the next morning, they headed to the cemetery, visited al faqi al-Muqaddam and the other great ones, and then headed back to town to visit the living masters. And you will notice something. He is in the Masjid al-Alhawi, which was the place where Imam al-Haddad had established his learning circles. And Imam al-Haddad was the student the illustrious student of his great 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 grandfather, Sheikh Omar bin Abdurrahman al Atas. So you see, they still had that connection to the sheikhs of their sheikhs of their sheikhs. Uh, likewise, when he was going to leave Turin, you notice he went to the Zembel Cemetery to visit the graves of those great awliya, and among them, in the head of them, who is the first one to be visited, al faqi al-Muqaddim. What is Faqih al-Muqaddim's name? His name and the name of his father. This is for a quick review question. No. Come on. I said, what is the name of al faqi al-Muqaddam, him and his father? So so-and-so, the son of so-and-so, what's his name? Muhammad ibn Ali. Good. al faqi al faqi al-Muqaddam. Good, good, good. MashaAllah. Habib Hussein, who was the grandfather, uh, the great grandfather of Habib Ali ibn Hassan, who was he named after? So this Habib Hussein that's being talked here, who gave Habib uh, Ali ibn Hassan the dhikr and the kirqa, who, who was he named after? Habib Hussein. Come on. La Adri. I don't know anyone named La Adri. <laughs> it's 
funny. Come on. We're reading. We should master all this stuff. Should be in our mind. Asa, that's right. Show him what you got. He was named after Habib Hassan Ibn Sheikh Abi Bakr bin Salim, not Sakran, Salim. Abi Bakr bin Salim. Right? Right? <laughs> that's funny. That's a good one. The Prophet saw his own grandson. Yeah, that's true. So that's Habib, uh, Habib Hussein. He was named after Sheikh Hussein bin Sheikh Abi Bakr ibn Salim. Not Ibn uh, Abi Bakr Sakran. No. Sheikh Abu Bakr bin Salim. Good. Because remember, Habib Sheikh Abu Bakr bin Salim was the student of Habib uh, Sheikh Hussein. Uh, I mean, uh, Habib Abdurrahman al Atas. Omar bin Abdurrahman Atas was a student of Hussein, uh, who was the son of Abu Bakr bin Salam. Right? Now, mashallah, may Allah benefit us by them. Starts by mentioning them. The mercy of Allah descends. We mention them, we know them, we love them, we emulate them. Inshallah, we receive a portion of their states. Now, go ahead. Upon his return to Huraydo, Habib Ali Rahimahullah moved to the rooms at the main mosque where he was to function as imam and teacher. He continued, however, to attend both his grandfather's teaching sessions and those of his grandfather's brother, Habib Ahmed. Among the illustrious great men of Allah Ta'ala he was to encounter and benefit from were Habib Abdul Rahman ibn Abdullah al Thaqi in Turin. Habib Abdul Rahman bin, uh, bin Abdullah al Thaqi. He was the student of Imam al Haddad called Al Lamatu Dunya. He was the scholar of the world. Who was he the Sheikh of? Who was the Sheikh of someone? Who was the Sheikh of someone? Who was the Sheikh of Uthman Dan or Ifman Dan Furi? You know, the Sheikhu. So Habib Abdul Rahman bin Abdullah bal Faqi was the Sheikh of the Sheikh of the Sheikh of Uthman Dan Furio. So who was the student? And we read his biography already. So who was the student of Habib Abdul Rahman bin Abdullah bal Faqi? So I said, the Sheikh of Uthman Dan Furio was the student of the student of the student of Habib Abdurrahman bin Abdullah Bal Faqi. So tell me that chain. Come on, Isa. You can do it. You close, you in the middle. So you should be good. You in the middle. Al Hafid Muhammad Murtada Zabidi is in the middle. So you got to go the other way and the other way. You got it? Look in your notes. Come on. Because this is how this is going to stick in your mind. Good. MashaAllah, Baron. Habib Abdul Rahman bin Mustafa al Aydarus. Good. So, Habib Abdul Rahman bin Abdullah bin al Faqi was the Sheikh of Habib Abdul Rahman bin Mustafa al Aydarus, who was the Sheikh of Al Hafid Muhammad Murtada al Zabiri, who was the Sheikh of Sheikh Jibril, who was the Sheikh of Uthman bin Furi. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. See, there's the connection. MashaAllah. Good.
MashaAllah. Okay, good. So there's our three, four, five, three Shehu connection. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Okay, go ahead, continue. Habib Ahmed ibn Zayn al Habashi, or him Allah, at the last village. Ahmed ibn Zayn al Habashi, what book did we read from him? Habib Ahmed bin Zayn al Habashi, which book did we read from him? Encompassing a pistol, a risala to Jamia. Right. Now, at the latter's village of Al Halta, Habib Abdullah ibn Jafar Madhar. Madhar? Madhar. Rahimullah, whom he met at the Da'an Valley, <clears throat> da Valley village of Al Khurain. Habib Umar ibn Abdul Rahman Al Bar, Rahimullah, whom he visited repeatedly. Sheikh Abdullah ibn Habib Uthman. Umar bin Abdurrahman al Bar was a great knower of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And he, subhanAllah, through his route, the great Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Bas al Dan acquired the knowledge through the route of that great alam. And these were all among the students of Imam al-Haddad. Mm. Sheikh Abdullah ibn Uthman al-Amudi, who died in 1143 AH, 1730 CE. Sheikh Umar ibn Abdul Qadir al-Amudi, who became one of his most influential spiritual masters before his death in 1147 AH, 1734 CE, and all three sons of Sheikh Ali Ba'ras. But do you notice something? All of them, when they became great scholars, they passed it to their children. Generation after generation after generation after generation. Right? One of the things uh, that really gives us such conviction in the way of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah is these unbroken chains of transmission that are abundant of great scholar after great scholar after great scholar after great scholar. Like our deen is protected. All we have to do is learn it and then practice it, right? Our deen is protected. You can't make stuff up. You're, you're going to be shown to fabricate. Our, our mashallah. And I'm telling you, We have a gaze upon us. We have a gaze upon us. Let's keep doing what we're doing. Let's improve. Let's get better. Let's memorize. Let's keep learning these chains and learning about these scholars, loving these scholars, asking Allah by their status. It's working. I want to just give you an example of working. And Jahid to Shahid. I just want to share it just to give you an example, an encouragement. Y'all remember a couple of months ago, those who've been around with us, we were looking for a book from Nigeria. Do y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? We had a brother came on Nigeria and I asked him to find a book. Then I told you, he never, he never got back we didn't see him since. I don't know what happened to him. But one of my other students 
actually found the book and we got the book. And we've been working on that book. It's three volumes. We've been working on that book. We've been studying that book privately. And we're, we're up to the third volume. We almost finished, like through the half of the third volume. We, 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 we've finished most of the book, right? So yesterday, the author, who is the Mufti of Nigeria, Ashari Maliki Sufi. He came to Egypt and that student of mine went to him because there was when he was come to visit him, went to him and informed him. They knew what we're doing because we, we have a plan for the book. So we have, I have copies. So we're going to do this book. Uh, it's, it's excellent. And he made dua for us. Gave permission for us to relate his book. And put emphasis to the people in charge of his works to make sure they get everything they need. He was so happy. So making dua. And that is a blessing. Right? That shows you what I mean. Jahid to Shahid. Jahid to Shahid. And we were thinking just, okay, mashallah. We got that blessing. And while we were talking, his son called on the phone and said, please make sure that I have your names right because the Sheikh emphasized that we write permission for y'all. SubhanAllah. To show you how just the dua of the awliya when we keep going, we're not going to outstrip them in love. You work, they work harder. And one of my teachers, he said, and this is the secret, because we're not there. He said, if you cannot be among the awliya, if you cannot be a wali, make sure you're in the heart of a wali. That's deep. You should write that. If you cannot be among the awliya of Allah, you can't be a wali, you're weak, you're deficient. Make sure you're in the heart of the awliya. Make sure you're in their heart. And they're going to take you wherever they go. It works. It works. Because you are a witness. We were looking and Allah just distance, space, time, age, none of that count. When that connection is meant to be, it's going to happen. Let us jahid to shahid as we say. Let us struggle and we will witness. But that's a project we're working in. It'll be coming soon. Uh, we're almost finished. And that's going to be something that we're going to do, inshallah. It's very beneficial, very, very beneficial. One of, to me, one of the best books written in Aqidah in our time. It's very scholarly, but awesome, 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 awesome. And, and we are honored that he accepted our efforts and supports us. And inshallah, we're going to arrange some things with him so that we all can benefit from that dua. Yes, that's Mufti Ibrahim ibn Saleh al Husseini. Yes. Hafidhullah ta'ala. He's old. May Allah protect him. But it's another connection through Africa for us. You know, 
a living connection. And that's a good thing. At the highest level. May Allah cause us to benefit from that. But that's just a good news for us to keep working. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Habib Ali al-Atas became a major teacher of religious sciences and spiritual master and was soon surrounded by students and disciples. He decided to move to a spot that before him had been deserted, except for brigands and other evildoers, so much so that travelers were always anxious when passing it by. He renamed it Mashad, Mashad Umar, with reference to his ancestor Habib Umar al-Atas. Soon it became known only as al-Mashad. He, he built a mosque, a school, and a mausoleum where he held sessions of remembrance before he died and in which he was buried, followed by many of his descendants. He began work there in 1160 AH, 1747 CE. Since then, the place was transformed from one of the dark, one of darkness to one of knowledge, remembrance, and worship. He began to celebrate the birth of the Prophet there. For, so, so, each Rabbi al Awal, <clears throat> excuse me, people flocked to him from every corner of the land farmers, Bedouins, traders, students, scholars, ascetics, and singers. It became one of the greatest festivals of Hadramaut. His fame inflamed many hearts with the fires of jealousy. He was slandered, insulted, and harmed in many more ways by people who otherwise pretended to be pious. This was to be seen on his journey. Here, know this. This is one of a conference for me. When I see that those great scholars, despite their high rank and their piety and their benefit, they were persecuted, they were hurt, sometimes physically disdained. So when we do our work and we're nothing, not even the dust under their shoes, when we do this work and sometimes People oppose. We shouldn't be like uh, affected by that because we so far greater people than us went through that. Right? The real awliya of Allah went through that. So if you're just doing a portion and you do a little, you get a little suffering, a little pushback, a little canceling, eh, no problem. Those far better than us went through far worse, right? Don't stop working, right? Don't stop working. Don't even pay that stuff no attention, right? In fact, consider it, as Sheikh Samir said to me one time, consider it a sign for you that Allah is accepting because he's allowing you to be afflicted. No. This was to be seen on his trips to the Daran Valley, where he followed in the footsteps of his ancestor, Habib Umar, calling the people to Allah Ta'ala, teaching, counseling, and intervening in disputes. Throughout, he maintained his sense of humor, for he was a man who veiled his spiritual state with humorous stories, playfulness, and frequent auditions where poems were sung to the music of flutes and drums. Many centuries ago, his ancestor, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may Allah Ta'ala's blessings and peace be upon him and his family, had yet utter, had said, excuse me, I speak in jest, yet utter not but the truth. So was Habib Ali, rahimahullah, also known to speak in jest, yet utter not but the truth. He died in 1172 AH, 1759 CE. A certain Majdub Sayyid said he had remained in the station of the pole for 13 years. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar.
Okay, let us stop there, insha'Allah ta'ala. You know, we are fortunate that we are learning these things, we are having these connections, but we must do the work, right? We can't just have access. We have to have gratitude for that access by acting according to what we've learned and spreading it, right? I was talking to someone and I was telling them, we recognize what we have. So we gotta do the work. We were talking about cults, right? You know, remember Imam Fahim talked about that next flick, neck, neck, Netflix, Netflix, Netflix special they got on cults. I think it's how to become a cult leader or some stuff. It's like a series. I was watching some of it yesterday. Uh, and we were talking about in the black community, how we went through all these different movements on our journey Uh, and alhamdulillah, we have our portion of these things. And so many people were misled and misguided and, you know, they lost hope, but Allah is still giving us. So we have to uh, work hard to preserve these things to spread them and to live up to the meanings contained in them, right? Right? And in that movie, I was thinking, because you know, someone called some, some individuals who quite were not pleased with what we're doing they called us the 3453 cult. And I was uh, looking at that video, that movie, and it said, one way that the cult leader becomes a cult leader is that he has to have some kind of persona around himself, like he's special. He said, you'll never be a good cult leader if you say you equal to everyone else. I said, I guess I'm shot, right? Because not only am I equal to you, I think I'm less than most of you. So I can't be a cult. I don't even see myself as a leader, right? So I guess I'm not going. And then I thought, remember Imam Fahim was talking about that early. I guess we're never gonna be successful as a cult because nobody wanna be a leader. The cult gotta have a leader, right? And he said that the cult leader is looking for broken people who no one, I don't want to be followed. Actually, I want to follow. So I want you to learn and then you can be the leader. Go ahead. Just make sure you know what you're doing. Just make sure you learn and just make sure you convey and you can lead. I'm happy with that. As long as you're not doing nothing unlawful, I'm willing to follow. As long as you stick into the way of Ahli Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, I'm willing to follow. So I guess that's enough for a cult there. Unless we got a new brand that they don't say, they don't know about this one. We're coming up with something new. But mashallah. Yeah, we have to do the work so we don't be in a cult. We have to learn. We have to have access. But we have to implement. Right? You got to do your part. All of us. 
Ain't no big guys and little yous. Right? It's all little us, little we. So ain't none of us big. And we all gotta do, have to do our part. Every single one of us have something to offer. In this way, there is no such thing as we don't need you. Right? One of our teachers, he said about this way, this path, he said, everybody's needed. Do you notice? He said, even the blind one is needed. Do you notice those great imams who were blind? Sheikh Omar bin Abdurrahman al atas was blind. Imam al-Haddad was blind. Habib Ahmed bin Hassan al atas was blind. And they were um, the leaders of the elite, and they couldn't see. Well, they had basira, they had a heart vision, right? You follow what I mean? One was a servant and became a knower of Allah. One is this, a trade business person became a knower of Allah. We got to do, everybody has a way, different routes, right? Everybody do their part. Everybody do their part. This is not a job for one charismatic leader. That doesn't work. This is a job for all of us to make effort and do mujahada and struggle. Each one reach one. Everyone take everyone by the hand. That is a lesson that I teach my boys. I'm very hard on them about it. Never do we go out walking and we walk, except you take your brother by the hand. So I take the oldest one, he's four, and the youngest one getting ready to turn two. We walk out that door, grab his hand. So even the little one will immediately grab hands first. And you better not let him go. And that's how we should be with each other. For some of us, we need the physical, the sisters with the sisters, the brothers with the brothers. But at the heart level, those hearts should be connected like hands. Don't let each other go. Until we all safe. And even, and I watch to ensure that they make sure that they're holding hands. And if one lets go, I'm going to discipline them. No, don't let him go. Right? Don't let him go. If he drifts off, grab him. And that's how we should be. And that's what Habib, what Sheikh Abu Bakr bin Salim said. Those who attach to us and connect to us, we never leave them. Those who attach and love and connect to them, us, we never leave them. In this world or in the next, we're going to see to their success. We're going to see to their needs. That's so important. Right? Don't let each other go. You know, this is, we're learning a lesson from this. This book has so many valuable lessons for us. So many Jews, so many precious gems, both spiritually and physically. And we have to get it. We have to get it. We have to get it. This next biography, 
MashaAllah, is an amazing, amazing, amazing biography. And it's getting closer to our time. And you're going to see Noah Evel, these next three biographies, oceans, oceans. So prepare yourself. Make sure you have on your life preserver. <laughs> so they, they get way go out there. These next three scholars, Habib Saleh bin Abdullah al Atas, Habib Abu Bakr bin Abdullah al Atas, and Habib Ahmed bin Hassan al Atas. Giants. So we at Maghrib at 7.15, Aisha at 8.45, and Fajr at 5.45 for those prayers. Inshallah. Uh, let me take the few quick questions we had. Uh, let me look. I had a few questions. Let me take them real quick. Allah, 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 Allah. Allah. Oh, the Maliki, the Maliki a learning session has been pushed to December. Uh, our the teacher has uh, other engagements that he thought he would be finished with, but he's not finished. Uh, may Allah, great, he has some exams that he's taken uh, for his trade and he had to extend uh, his study period. May Allah grant him success. So we decided that we're going to do two books in December. So we'll do Al-Akhdari and start on Ibn Ashir. Inshallah, we can finish both of them in December. So we'll do that last week in December. I think it's the Christmas, the week before and then the Christmas break. Let me check. So you can schedule to come to Atlantic City. Uh, let me check. Let me just double check. I just want to check in a second. Allah. Yeah, so we're looking at the weekend of December the 16th to do Akhdari. And then during the last week of December, since most people will be off, we can do Ibn Ashir. So that's our intention. The week of the 16th, the weekend, that weekend. So that would be... December 15th, 16th, and 17th. And then the next week, because it's the Christmas between Christmas and New Year's break, 
We'll do Akhdari doing that, and then we're going to try to do Ibn Ashir. So that's our intention, if we can work it out. So we're looking, so if you can prepare for the weekend of the 16th. So 15th, 16th, and 17th. And then we're going to try to do something during the Christmas break, between Christmas and New Year. Do another book if possible. But right now we've, we've Akrab and Mas. Uh, uh, inshallah, that's our intention. So we'll we'll, we'll have it, um, everything laid out later on, probably next week. We just got to work the schedule. The weekend is the 15th to the 16th. That's for Al-Aqdari. 15th, 16th, and 17th. And then that following week, we got to work out how we're going to do it. Uh, inshallah. But that's where we're at. And since we're putting the Malikis behind, let's sneak the Shafris in while they're doing something else. <laughs> let's do some Shafri stuff. But let's see. I don't um I don't know my schedule is kind of real busy, so I don't know how I can pull a Shafri thing off. I'm too I'm loaded and I'm expecting twins within the next month or two, really next month. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do anything. Uh may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitate, facilitate. Uh Inshallah ta'ala. So we'll work it out. Um, and we're switching. Uh, we may um, have to delay our start of reading Riyadh Salihin tomorrow, maybe I'll do an introduction to it because it's Jumu'ah. And the time we're having the class is, is Jumu'ah in Egypt. So Sheikh Abdul Aziz will not be able to make it. So unless we change the time, I just think we should just postpone and maybe I'll do. Uh, and here's the book we'll be going into, Riyadh Salihin in Arabic. Uh, that we're reading. Uh, There is, so if you want to get it, because we're going to finish this book, inshallah, we're going to do our best uh, so you can follow in Arabic. That's the text. What is happening here? Come on. Those who want to follow it. Uh, yeah, so tomorrow we're going to uh, probably postpone. I'll do an introduction to Riyadh Salihin tomorrow morning, inshallah, and we'll start our reading uh, after that. Let's see what happens, inshallah. But we'll but it give you a chance to at least have the book before we get too far in it. Uh, Barakallahu bikum wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam. What was the word for Sufism back in the day of the Prophet? So it's a, 
they used to have the concept, they have the concept of a zuhud. They didn't have a technical name for it. All of these terms were not mentioned in the time of the Prophet. There was no such thing as fiqh, aqidah, ilm al-hadith. The Prophets didn't have technical terms. All of those terms came later as technical terms in the science. And it wasn't even called ihsan. Uh, you know, it wasn't called tezkiyah. That wasn't a name. They didn't have technical terms. They had the practice. And later, the scholars derive technical names for those practices. Right? So they were like Sheikh Samir said to me, we lived to Sowuf before we knew its name. We live Sufism before we even knew the term. That's how the Sahaba were. They just lived it. All of the things that make Tasawwuf were their daily practices. So as Zuhud, having abstinence from the world, the early Sufis were called Zuhud, right? Uh, yeah, that's it. Tell you, Barakallahu Bikum, inshallah, we'll see you tonight if Allah gives us tawfiq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.